Welcome to Stopgap's Home Practice. This session is learning repertoire from artificial things. Short clips from this season of Home Practice. Our disabled and non-disabled teachers dance and deliver their sessions in a brightly lit studio with a wooden floor. Pastel coloured geometric shapes glide across to reveal text inside the outline of a house. Home Practice. Artificial Things Repertoire Hi, I'm Amy. I am a standing dancer with short, dark, curly hair and I'm wearing black trousers and a nice bright orange and green top. So this session involves us learning an excerpt from Artificial Things, which is a stopgap production originally created for theatre and then re-envisioned as a film and it's also on the GCSE dance syllabus. This isn't just for GCSE students though, it's designed for all moving bodies. And in the comments below, you'll see a link to footage of the material, which is actually a duet performed by myself and David Wildridge. I think it's really interesting as a solo and I hope you do too. This is part of a series on artificial things and it's nice to be a little bit warm before we start. So Christian and Nadan offer a lovely video on warming up uh, as a precursor to this. And then if you want to keep moving afterwards, there's also some really great creative tasks from LJ and Hannah and Lucy Bennett, the artistic director. All links to these videos are in the comments below. And then one last video that might be really interesting to do um, in relation to this is Thomas Goodwin's Seed on Touch. He explores lots of qualities that feed into this material really nicely. Before we start learning, I would like to describe how I'm going to use the space as we learn. It's quite difficult because we change directions a lot, so I want us to have this continuity in how I describe the space. So, firstly, I want you to place your screen as much as possible flat against a wall so not in a corner but as flat as you can and then also face as flat onto the screen as possible then my front is going to be the same as your front so that means when i face the front i will have my back to you and when you're facing your front you'll be facing your screen so face your front then when i talk about the body and how we move the body i'll always use right and left and when i talk about the space even if we change direction, I'm going to describe the same part of the space in the same way. This will all become clear. So, face your front. Then, point your left arm towards the corner slightly in front of your body. This will always be your left front diagonal. Then, point your right arm to the corner slightly in front of your body. This will always be your right front diagonal. Point your left arm slightly behind the body to the corner. This is your left back diagonal. And your right arm slightly behind you to the corner. This is your right back diagonal. Turn 90 degrees to your left. You are now facing the left side of the space. Turn 180 degrees to your right. This is the right side of the space. And then turn another 90 degrees to your right you're now facing the back. Maybe we just take a little game so that that becomes really clear and you can really paint the space and know where your directions are. So face the front. Now turn 180 degrees to your right. I'm not gonna do it, I'm just gonna say it. Now point your right arm to the left back diagonal. Turn to face the right side of the space. Face the front of the space. Point your left arm to the right front diagonal. Turn to face the left side of the space and then point your right arm to the right front diagonal. <laughs> Hopefully you were able to do that and now you really have the directions clear in your mind. And one last thing before we get learning, just to talk a tiny bit about how we made this material. We basically improvised a lot with the idea of invitation. So let me explain. Instead of 
physically manipulating each other, we invited each other to follow with gentle pushing and pulling. So there was never really any contact. It was always that invitation to move with. And through this, we developed a really heightened sense of our skin. And in actual fact, I didn't really use my eyes. I really tried to listen with my whole body. Great. We are going to learn the sequence in two sections. And each section will learn in three layers. The first layer is going to go through the directions and the movement of the base and the legs. The second layer is going to be about the movement of the torso, arms and head. And then the third layer is all about the qualities and the initiation of the movement. Let's get learning. Section one, layer one. Directions and movement of your legs or base. Begin facing the right front diagonal. Legs straight and the left leg slightly in front of the right. Step to the right front diagonal with your right foot shifting forward in space slightly. Bend deeply the knees. The left heel comes off the floor. Then lengthen the knees fully, still the weight is mainly on the right leg and then bend the knees again slightly. Finish with the weight mainly on the right foot and on the ball of the left foot. The next move is going to turn us to face the left side of the space. Shift the left foot back a little. This is a preparation to turn to the left side of the space. So do what you need with your dance tool in order to do this. Then pivot on your right heel to face the left side of the space. You still have a small bend in the knees and your left foot should be in front of your right foot. Take a big shift to the left side of the space. So this is the direction you're facing by stepping out with your right foot into a long lunge. The next move turns us a full 360 degrees to face the left side of the space again. We do this by using your left leg as your pivot point and stepping your right foot to the right side of the space, turning towards your left. Continue to turn towards your left, keeping your right foot where it is. This is now the pivot point and slide your left leg behind. You end facing the left side again. So you turned a full 360 degrees. The weight is mainly on the right foot, which will be in front of the left foot. The knees are turned out and bent. Your base leg position is fairly narrow. Twist quickly to the left, so 180 degrees to face the right side of the space without moving your feet and straighten the legs as you do so. There is a small pause here. Twist towards the left back diagonal. The right foot will be slightly in front of the left foot. Bend deeply in both legs. Like at the beginning, the weight is mainly on the right leg and the left heel comes off the floor. You then straighten the legs and finally bend the knees again slightly. As you do this, you open a little to face the back. Weight on the right foot and left ball of foot. We're now gonna repeat Section one, layer one of the movement again. Begin facing the right front diagonal. Legs straight and the left leg slightly in front of the right. Step to the right front diagonal with your right foot shifting forward in space slightly. Bend deeply the knees. The left heel comes off the floor. Then lengthen the knees fully, still the weight is mainly on the right leg, and then bend the knees again slightly. Finish with the weight mainly on the right foot and on the ball of the left foot. The next move is gonna turn us to face the left side of the space. Shift the left foot back a little. This is a preparation to turn to the left side of the space. So do what you need with your dance tool in order to do this. Then pivot on your right heel to face the left side of the space. You still have a small bend in the knees and your left foot should be in front of your right foot. Take a big shift to the left side of the space. So this is the direction you're facing by stepping out with your right foot into a long lunge. The next move turns us a full 360 degrees to face the left side of the space again. We do this by using your left leg as your pivot point and stepping your right foot to the right side of the space, turning towards your left. 
Continue to turn towards your left, keeping your right foot where it is. This is now the pivot point and slide your left leg behind. You end facing the left side again. So you've turned a full 360 degrees. The weight is mainly on the right foot, which will be in front of the left foot. The knees are turned out and bent. Your base leg position is fairly narrow. Twist quickly to the left, so 180 degrees, to face the right side of the space without moving your feet and straighten the legs as you do so. There is a small pause here. Twist towards the left back diagonal, the right foot will be slightly in front of the left foot. Bend deeply in both legs. Like at the beginning, the weight is mainly on the right leg and the left heel comes off the floor. You then straighten the legs and finally bend the knees again slightly. As you do this, you open a little to face the back. Weight on the right foot and left ball of foot. We're now gonna repeat section one, layer one of the movement again. Section one, layer two. So layer two is all about the movement of the torso, arms, head, and also the focus. And we begin where we began layer one. So facing the right front diagonal with the left leg slightly in front of the right and the knees straight. Before you move your base, you twist the head slightly to face the front. As you step or shift forward on the right front diagonal and bend deeply, move the head back to the direction you shift towards. And then as you bend deeply, curve the torso forward and drop the left arm down. Keep circling the left arm up and the torso follows as you straighten the legs. And then as you bend the legs again a little, the arm pauses slightly behind the body with the chest facing the ceiling. The left arm then continues to move back behind you and as you twist to face the left, you twist into it. So you end facing the left with the left arm curved slightly in front of you. Reach the left arm long in front of you. The legs then shift into the lunge and lastly, the head faces the front. It is a quick sequential movement, arms, leg, head. The left arm goes up over the head as you begin to turn, stepping on your right leg. And as you slide the left leg behind facing the left side of the space, your left arm bends and ends up at belly button height, pointing to the left like it's resting on a surface. The head and focus then quickly moves towards the left front diagonal. As you quickly twist, your arms come to a low position, soft elbows and slightly bent wrists, and the focus is slightly down. The pause in your lower body is when the right wrist moves upwards at the same time as the left wrist moves outwards. The movement is broken into two quick movements. The focus moves upwards with the right arm. Bend the right arm as you twist to the left back diagonal and bring your forearm down. The left arm then does the same as at the beginning, dropping down as the torso curves forward and you bend the knees deeply. And then the arm and chest come together as you straighten the legs. As the chest opens to the ceiling, because the body opens to face the back of the space, this time the left arm ends at shoulder height to the side of the body. We're now gonna repeat this section. So section one, layer two, we'll take again. We begin where we began, layer one. So facing the right front diagonal with the left leg slightly in front of the right and the knees straight. Before you move your base, you twist the head slightly to face the front. As you step or shift forward on the right front diagonal and bend deeply, move the head back to the direction you shift towards. And then as you bend deeply, curve the torso forward and drop the left arm down. Keep circling the left arm up and the torso follows as you straighten the legs. And then as you bend the legs again a little, the arm pauses slightly behind the body with the chest facing the ceiling. The left arm then continues to move back behind you. And as you twist to face the left, you twist into it. So you end facing the left with the left arm curved slightly in front of you. Reach the left arm long in front of you. The legs then shift into the lunge and lastly, the head faces the front. It is a quick sequential movement, arms, leg, head. 
The left arm goes up over the head as you begin to turn, stepping on your right leg. And as you slide the left leg behind facing the left side of the space, your left arm bends and ends up at belly button height, pointing to the left like it's resting on a surface. The head and focus then quickly moves towards the left front diagonal. As you quickly twist, your arms come to a low position, soft elbows and slightly bent wrists, and the focus is slightly down. The pause in your lower body is when the right wrist moves upwards at the same time as the left wrist moves outwards. The movement is broken into two quick movements. The focus moves upwards with the right arm. Bend the right arm as you twist to the left back diagonal and bring your forearm down. The left arm then does the same as at the beginning, dropping down as the torso curves forward and you bend the knees deeply. And then the arm and chest come together as you straighten the legs. As the chest opens to the ceiling, because the body opens to face the back of the space, this time the left arm ends at shoulder height to the side of the body. Section one, layer three. So this layer is all about the quality of the movement and the initiation. Now we're just gonna take this layer once, but there's a timestamp here, so that if you want to repeat the layer again, you can. Facing the right front diagonal, left foot in front, knee straight. The head moves to the front because something has brushed your left cheekbone. The initiation to shift out and bend is the sensation of the chest melting downwards. Then the left arm is invited upwards and back in space. The skin on the chest is alive and you have a sense of eyes on your clavicle and they're looking at the ceiling. It is the action of the left arm being gently pulled back that twists the body to the left. The left index finger is then pulled quickly out, lengthening the arm and shifting you out. Remember the sequential movement. Arms, leg or base and head looking front. Again, it is the feeling of the left arm being pulled that turns you and then you feel your whole body settle as you arrive facing the left. The quick movement of the head is like someone has called your name. Inhale as you swiftly twist. Feel as though an external force has moved you. It is then you who initiates the movement of the arms. So you feel like you lightly and quickly pull something. Remember, it's two quick movements. Bum bum. Have the sense that your right forearm is sliding down a surface as your right arm bends and moves downwards. Like the first moment of the sequence, you feel your chest mount and then an external force lightly pulls your left arm up and open. As you rest with your chest facing the ceiling and your left arm to the side facing the back of the space, there is slight movement as you rest here. You feel almost like smoke. We're now going to look at section two of the movement, learning all three layers. Section two, layer one. So again, looking at the directions and the movement of the legs or base. And we are going to start this where we finished section one of the movement. So facing the back with the chest up towards the ceiling and the left arm out to the side. So the first move will turn us to finish facing the left side of the space. Begin turning the left to the left, stepping on your right foot to the right side of the space. Then continue to turn by pivoting on the right foot, ending facing the left. Keep the weight on the right foot and place the left heel out in front of you. Remember, you should be facing the left. Feed your left leg back and step onto it so the weight is on both feet and twist to face the back. The knees are slightly bent and the feet are apart in a turned out position. As you lengthen the leg, shift the weight onto the right leg and extend the left foot, toes lightly resting on the floor. The legs are still turned out. Shift the weight back to two feet and bend deeply in the legs. They're still turned out. <laughs> Again, shift the weight to the right leg as you straighten the legs, but this time the left toes are extended and come just off the floor, so you're in a balance. Step to the left back diagonal with the left foot there is still a little weight on the ball of the right foot. You finish this move facing the right front diagonal. So 
you twist towards the front, pivoting on the left foot and right ball of foot to end facing the right front diagonal. The right foot will be in front of the left, the legs end turned out and both knees are bent. We're now going to repeat that, so section two, layer one. So facing the back with the chest up towards the ceiling and the left arm out to the side. So the first move will turn us to finish facing the left side of the space. Begin turning the left to the left, stepping on your right foot to the right side of the space. Then continue to turn by pivoting on the right foot, ending facing the left. Keep the weight on the right foot and place the left heel out in front of you. Remember, you should be facing the left. Feed your left leg back and step onto it so the weight is on both feet and twist to face the back. The knees are slightly bent and the feet are apart in a turned out position. As you lengthen the leg, shift the weight onto the right leg and extend the left foot, toes lightly resting on the floor. The legs are still turned out. Shift the weight back to two feet and bend deeply in the legs. They're still turned out. <laughs> Again, shift the weight to the right leg as you straighten the legs, but this time the left toes are extended and come just off the floor, so you're in a balance. Step to the left back diagonal with the left foot. There is still a little weight on the ball of the right foot. You finish this move facing the right front diagonal. So, you twist towards the front, pivoting on the left foot and right ball of foot to end facing the right front diagonal. The right foot will be in front of the left, the legs end turned out and both knees are bent. Section two, layer two. So just remembering that layer two is the movement of the torso, arms, head, and also the focus. And we begin where we finish section one, so facing the back. As you turn toward the left by stepping onto the right foot, lower the left arm. And when you place the left heel down, facing the left side of the space, unravel the arms to the side at shoulder height and lift the chest upwards. The elbows do not fully straighten. Before you move the left foot back to twist to face the back, you initiate the movement with the head and torso by dropping the chin to the chest and then rippling down through the body. It's when you ripple down the spine, you lower the arms and step on the left leg to face the back. As you transfer the weight to the right leg and straighten the legs, bring both arms up to the high diagonal line and look straight ahead. Then take a quick look to the right. As you bring the weight back to two legs and bend deeply, bend both arms at the elbow so you end up making like a cactus position with the arms. Elbows are at shoulder height and the fingertips are pointing upwards, the palms face the back of the space. You're also looking straight ahead. Then when you shift the weight back onto the right leg, reach both arms long to the side at shoulder height. The left leg is hovering off the floor and you're looking at your right fingertips. As you step on the left leg to the back left diagonal, circle the right arm back at the same time as you circle the left arm down. It's like they're connected and they only move to the horizontal line. So then as you twist, you bend the elbows in. You pause the left arm while you circle the right forearm into the body. The fingertips lightly graze the belly. And then as the forearm circles out and away from the body, it continues around to finish in a curved position at belly button height. As this movement is finishing, you unravel the left arm to the side of the body and look along the arm. Let's repeat this layer. So we're on section two of the movement, layer two. Let's go again. We begin where we finish section one, so facing the back. As you turn toward the left by stepping onto the right foot, lower the left arm. And when you place the left heel down, facing the left side of the space, unravel the arms to the side at shoulder height and lift the chest upwards. The elbows do not fully straighten. Before you move the left foot back to twist to face the back, you initiate the movement with the head and torso by dropping the chin to the chest and then rippling down through the body. It's when you ripple down the spine, you lower the arms and step on the left leg to face the back. 
As you transfer the weight to the right leg and straighten the legs, bring both arms up to the high diagonal line and look straight ahead. Then take a quick look to the right. As you bring the weight back to two legs and bend deeply, bend both arms at the elbow. So you end up making like a cactus position with the arms. Elbows are at shoulder height and the fingertips are pointing upwards. The palms face the back of the space. You're also looking straight ahead. Then when you shift the weight back onto the right leg, reach both arms long to the side at shoulder height. The left leg is hovering off the floor and you're looking at your right fingertips. As you step on the left leg to the back left diagonal, circle the right arm back at the same time as you circle the left arm down. It's like they're connected and they only move to the horizontal line. So then as you twist, you bend the elbows in. You pause the left arm while you circle the right forearm into the body. The fingertips lightly graze the belly and then as the forearm circles out and away from the body, it continues around to finish in a curved position at belly button height. As this movement is finishing, you unravel the left arm to the side of the body and look along the arm. Section two, layer three. So this is all about the quality of the movement and where it is initiated from. Again, we start facing the back, how we begin section two of the movement. And I'm gonna take this layer again just once but you can use the time steps to flick back if you want to repeat. As you turn to the left, have a sense of the air against the skin. And as you lift the chest, feel like it is connected to the left heel. Again, take a moment here with a heightened sense of your skin and a feeling of being light and airy like smoke. It is your throat pulling backwards that initiates the movement of the head and spine in order to turn to face the back of the space. Then an external force pulls the wrists upwards and your ribs just come along for the ride. Again, it's like someone calls your name and that's why you look to the right. The elbows are pulled downwards and the forearms feel like they're against the surface as you bend. So there's a little bit of resistance. As you shift to the right leg and hover the left, the arms are being pulled in both directions and that's why you're on balance. As you step on the left leg to the back left diagonal, the movement of the arms is initiated by the left shoulder blade pulling down and the forward and the right shoulder blade being pulled up and back. And then to move the right forearm, circling it, you feel like you're stirring the air. And then you hug an invisible body in front of you. You feel like you're pulling with the palm of the left hand as you unravel the left arm to the side. So now we are going to take the whole sequence and I'm going to give you a bit less information, so less cues. And we're also going to do it with a sense of timing. So the sense of timing that I had when I performed. So come to your starting position and let's begin. Something has brushed your left cheekbone the chest melts downwards. The left arm is invited upwards and back in space. The skin of the chest is alive. The left arm is being gently pulled back. This twists the body to the left. Arm is pulled, right leg shifts and head looks. The left arm being pulled turns you and then you feel your whole body settle as you arrive facing the left. Someone's called your name. Inhale as you swiftly turn. Wrists pull out and up, one, two. Right forearm is sliding down a surface as your right arm bends and moves downwards. Your chest then melts. An external force lightly pulls your left arm up and open. Rest with your chest facing the ceiling. You feel like smoke. As you turn, feel the air against the skin. You have a heightened sense of your skin as you open your chest upwards. 
pull back with your throat and ripple through your spine to face the back. An external force then pulls the wrists upwards and the ribs come along for the ride. Someone calls your name. The elbows are pulled downwards as you bend deeply. The arms are being pulled in both directions as you balance on the right leg. As you step on the left leg to the back left diagonal, the shoulder blades are manipulated and then facing the right front diagonal, the right forearm stirs the air and you hug an invisible body and then unravel the left arm to the side. The original score to the sequence will now play. I will repeat the sequence to time as we have just done, but with no verbal instructions and you can just enjoy the music and try the sequence one last time. So thank you for joining me in this session and um, like, subscribe and share our videos and take a look at the rest of home practice. There's loads of amazing material there. And if you're interested in having a workshop in person to do with artificial things, then visit our website and it will direct you as to how to do that. Thanks very much and we'll see you again soon. Home practice. Stopgap Dance Company.